So I've powered it up and here we are, we've got Grub come up straight away. So I press enter, oh, press enter and it's worked anyway. Right, looks like I've not set up one of the partitions correctly. So, um, what's it complaining about? Let's see, no partition. So that's probably the um, the root partition is incorrect. So what we can do is to go to command line. In fact, we could do it there. We can edit that. Press E and do um, set root equals open bracket. If you press tab there. You can see right down the bottom left hand corner it's got the different disks. So I'm assuming our one will be disk 0. No it's not. Disk 1. Yeah it's disk 1. Oh yes that's right. It's because we've got a GPT layout that should have specified the partition as GPT um, 9, 10, 11 whatever. So we want GPT 7. Sorry. Comma GPT 7. That's what's missing. So let's try Control X now, see if that'll boot. Okay, looks like there's something wrong there in the file system. That's not a problem. So if I log on as the root and the password I created, room, we've got a prompt, so we just need to resolve these issues with the um, file system. So let's cat the FS tab. And it's saying, right, I haven't got a mouse now, so I can't highlight anything at all. Um, but it's saying that the boot partition had the wrong file system type. So we can do something like block id slash dev slash sda star and it should tell us there that the boot partition which is dev sda 7 has got type of x4 so I'm not sure why that didn't work. or a bad option, bad super block on SDA 7. Okay, so let's try it by hand to see what's mounted. It's not mounted, so let's mount slash dev slash SDA 7 onto slash boot uh, slash, yeah, slash boot. Well, that's worked. So it's probably one of the options that I've got in there. Um, so what I should do is I shall Ah, oh, I can see what it is now. This is not in green. This It says default. It should be defaults. So that's why that didn't work. So what I can do is if I unmount boot if I just do, before I did, I explicitly stated mount the seventh partition seven onto boot. If I just do mount boot, it will read the FS tab and it will prove that that entry now works and it does, it's worked correctly. So the other problem was it didn't like, I've lost it actually, um, it didn't like that EF5R's entry in FS tab. Oh, EF5R FS, that should be. So that's another typo I've made there. So I knew it came up red anyway, which is why I ignored it, but obviously missed out the F for EF5R FS. So I'm going to quit this, reboot, and see how a fresh boot with these changes looks.
Okay, there's our grub menu. Let it automatically start itself, and it's still failing because I didn't change. <laughs> I didn't change the grub file, so I'll need to modify it again. So set root equals open bracket hd1 it was comma gpt7 close bracket and then control x to boot oh, still complaining about that fs oh, I've, I've spelt the actual des the target location wrong as well it's getting way too late <laughs> So first of all, let's modify the FS tab again. Ah, yeah, it's getting late now. I'm making too many mistakes. ETC FS tab. So EFI var FS, and this should also be EFI var FS as well. Um, So what I should do is check this. So mount slash sys firmware your five vars. That's better. That's worked now. And then I need to mount boot. It's already mounted. That's good. And I need to edit um, the boot grub grub.cfg file and I need to change this here so it's actually HD1. I've noticed this before with the EFI the disk numbering goes a bit funny so I don't know if you remember when I was tabbing when I was editing this in the menu when it booted there was an HD1, HD uh, sorry there was an HD0, an HD1 and an HD2 well there is only one disk in here I've removed the USB stick so there is only one hard disk and yet it's cr obviously created some other virtual ones and it just so happens that the hard disk is referred to as HD1 now and the thing I need to remember to put in here is GPT because I've got a, a GPT partitioning scheme on this disk so with all that there shouldn't really need to be any other changes so let's do another reboot and make sure we've tidied up all these um, typos I've made So I've booted into Grub, it's counting down, let it boot automatically, and it's worked this time. Everything's correct, and it's booted up with no errors at all. So let's log in again. And, well, there you go, you can see we've got a prompt, we've been doing stuff anyway. We can cat the LSB stuff. You can see that's the file we, last file we created, and there's an LS... LFS release 9.1 and there's also the OS release file as well. Um, we could even just check that the internet is working. Um, let's try see if I can get to my gateway first of all. That's working so that proves the hardware is working. Let's see if the DNS resolver is working. We're typing in an IP address and yes that's resolved to something and it's getting a ping back as well so the the network is fully functional which is also good so one last thing I will try to do is to reboot and I'm going to press my boot menu key which is F12 like I say yours might be F8 or you might need to go into your BIOS menu to actually configure the boot order manually I'm just going to make sure I can still boot into Windows. I'm holding down my F12 key. I'm getting my one-time boot menu. You can see we've now got LFS in this boot. And I'm going to select the first Windows Boot Manager just to make sure that Windows boots successfully and that we haven't trashed anything. And it certainly does seem to be loading successfully. Yep, let's come up with the first window, let's see if I can log in, yep that all seems to be fine, 
So one last thing I'm going to do is just to reboot, restart, see whether it's remembered, whether it's always going to boot into Linux from scratch or if it just remembers the last one you boot, booted into. Okay, so it's it's configured the way it's configured is that it's always going to boot into Linux from scratch by default. Um, what I'll do on another video is to show you how to add an entry for Windows, so you can always come to Grub as a um, as the main boot menu, and then you can select which operating system to boot from from here, um, which will be especially useful if you don't have a an option to select um, an operating system to boot from. Uh, such as F12 or F8. But apart from that, um, eventually it was a successful build, um, purely because I was getting a bit tired, I was missing things, uh, making a few typos, it's been quite a long day.